Okay, guys, hey, look, I hope everybody's having fun on the Welder 101 course. Um, I know I've been seeing lots of emails, lots of pictures. People are already out there building some really cool stuff. And um, I've had a few questions on the, um, the difference between hard wire and um, flux cord welding. Um, and I just want to kind of explain it a little bit and um, the benefits of the flux core versus the hard wire and the benefits of the hard wire versus the flux core. And we'll get into that and I'm gonna explain that to you. Um, but first I wanna start off, I, I, I ran out a little bit of the wire that's inside of this, uh, this is a 110 machine and what we're gonna do today is I'm gonna use the same machine for flux core and hard wire, okay? So what I've done is I've plumbed gas into another bottle over here because this machine will run gas also. So look, if you guys are out looking for a machine and you're like, hey, I don't know where to go or I don't know what to start with, um, my recommendation, if you're gonna just do a 110 welder, see if you can find the option for 110 or 220, number one. That would up the duty cycle on the machine if it's 220 and get you a little bit more duty cycle out of it. We, we're gonna say that you have a machine that has a certain amount of duty cycle per hour. So a 110 welder like this one here is like 12 minutes within the hour, okay? That's, it, that means you could just keep welding for 12 minutes, it's gonna shut the machine off. It usually trips a breaker and it depends on how high you turn this machine up too. Now I know on this machine right here, if I crank this thing up and I really start welding, it'll go for maybe one minute and it'll trip a breaker, okay? Um, so the duty cycle is kind of important if you're going to be doing a lot of welding. Um, the 110s are really great for, say, um, repair work or, you know, like uh, back in the old days when I was doing a lot of wrought iron work, you'd be clear out in the back of somebody's lot trying to weld wrought iron back together. And you could either pull a 110 out there with extension cords or drag your welding leads out there. Okay. Now, if you're going to be doing a lot of um, like wrought iron welding or something like that. These 110s are really handy to go out there and put them together. Um, but you got to remember that the longer your extension cord goes, the less amperage you get by the time you get to the machine. It just keeps lowering it. Okay. There's a lot of things that you kind of will learn in the process of using a 110 welder. But if my recommendation is get one that you can run CO2 mix gas with or just CO2 and 110 or 220. Now this is a 110 machine only, and I'm gonna show you on 110 what it'll do. And, um, but if you go buy one, you gotta really watch. If you see one at a swap meet or you buy one at the store or whatever, you're just gonna see it. You're oh, there's a 110, I need it. Check and make sure that it has a provision for gas because the option's there if you ever need it. If you ever wanna run hard wire through your machine, you have that option. I'm gonna show you the difference between the flux core and what it looks like um, between the flux core and what it actually looks like when it's done and the hard wire, okay? Um, anyway, I'm gonna get started. The first thing I wanna talk about is the actual flux core, okay? The reason why they call it flux core is because there is flux in the core of this wire. Now it's so little and you can't see it and maybe um, we can pull up a diagram of what the uh, flux looks like inside of here. I'm gonna tell you exactly about what it looks like. You have a stick rod right here, right? Everybody knows what stick welding is. You know, you hook it up to your electrode and you just start stick welding, right? Well, the difference is between these two only really is the flux is on the outside of this one and not on the inside. So the metal basically that is your filler, which is your um, consumable wire, um, it's on the outside right here and the consumable metal is on the inside of the flux on this okay so basically flux core is just like arc welding and it's just coming out on a wire in your mig welder okay the technology of it is super cool and um it's really handy to have okay so i just want to explain to you guys in, in a in a easy way you see these stick rods all the time that guys are stick welding with well this is basically the same thing the difference is, is the, the, the flux is on the inside, okay? Now, we can get into a, a couple other things, and I'm only gonna kinda touch on it a little bit. The flux core welding 
has a flux inside of it so you don't have to use a gas. So uh, a lot of times like here in my shop, we'll use a CO2 argon mix, okay? And that just really cleans up the metal when you weld, it shields it. And um, you need that gas for shielding to keep the atmosphere of the humidity and the junk that's in the air basically will destroy your weld. It, it sounds crazy, but that is the, that's why you have flux, okay? The atmosphere will mess up your weld. Now, flux core has the flux inside of it, okay? It's an actual flux. The, uh, the hardwire machines have a gas, a shielded gas that comes out and shields your, your weld as it goes, okay? Um, the gas shielding wire is always cleaner. It looks better. It's just so much easier to work with. At the end of the day, you look like you're a good welder. Flux core, it's pretty tough to make your weld look good all the time, okay? Now, there is uh, so many great things about the flux core that you can weld wherever you want. Okay, if the wind's blowing 50 miles an hour and you gotta weld something, drag your flux core welder out there and you can weld it. Do not take your gas welder out there that has um, gas coming through the nozzle because once the wind hits it, it blows it out, it throws nothing but impurities into your weld and then you have nothing but porosity and it becomes a train wreck, basically. It looks like hell. Um, and you know, in, in the school at the Welder 101, I kind of teach you how to set up a regulator for hardwire and stuff like that. And we can, anybody has any problems or comments or wants to know, let me know because I'll try to do these videos so I can show you guys how to set it up. I just, I don't know what everybody needs. So I'm just touching on a few things that I've, I've talked to um, some guys on, on the difference between hardwire and flux core. Now, on your flux core, there is another wire called dual shield. I call it dual shield, okay? And what it is, is it's, it's a flux core that runs a consumable gas, also a shielded gas, okay? And man, you can weld some big stuff with that. The penetration is unbelievable. And when you're done, it leaves a slag, basically a flux slag on top of the weld when you're done. And I think what we'll do um, later on is get into dual shield welding so I can show you guys how dual shield actually works. Right now, today, I'm not gonna get into that because I just wanna get through this 110 welder and talk to you guys about it. So, right now, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna pull up this, uh, this machine right now set up with flux core in it. Um, we are going to weld with the flux core so you can see what it looks like. I'm gonna give you guys a few ideas on, you know, how to make it work and look right. Um, now, usually with the uh, flux core, and I got our little tabs here. If you guys have taken the Welder 101 course, and excuse me, if you guys have taken the Welder 101 course and you haven't got your tabs to practice, you should get some tabs. These tabs, I already have them cut and ready to go. So you guys can basically do T-joints, you can do lap joints, you know, you can do some butt welding with it. There's a lot of things that we can do with it. Um, right now we're gonna do some T-joints because they're the, probably the easiest for you to kind of see what we're doing here. Um, but I'm going to tack these together. We're going to use the flux core. I'm going to show you the difference. Now, what you're going to see is you're going to see a lot of smoke. You're going to see a lot of slag bouncing around everywhere. Um, it's a, it's not a real clean weld. There's a little bit more, um, cleanup after flux core, but usually if you're out in the middle of nowhere and you need to just get something welded, who cares anyway? You know what I mean? Um, but I'm going to show you the differences between the flux and the, uh, the gas shielded wire, okay? So let's get started on that. And um, right now, like I said, I'm set up for only flux core in this machine. And then once we switch over to the hard wire, I'm gonna have to change the wire. I'm gonna have to reverse the polarity and we're gonna have to turn the gas on, okay? And that'll get us back into the hard wire mode, okay? I mean, with any welding at all, make sure that when you get ready to weld, put a long sleeve shirt on if you can. This flux core is extremely bright. It will flash burn you quickly. There's another uh, thing that I normally don't use the tip. When I flux core, you can actually pull the tip off because you don't need shielded gas. This is for your shielding gas right here. 
it's uh, once the gas comes out, it goes through here and it comes out into the bottom of your your gun and it just covers up your weld. With flux core, you don't need it because your flux is inside your wire, so you don't need it. So a lot of times I won't even use that because I can see better without the tip on it. Um, so let me get this started here. We'll make sure we got a good ground. That's very important. And if you can, I like to kind of ground it to your workpiece if you can, but you know, not all the time you can do it. So if you can do it though, cause it makes it a lot better. All right, let's give this thing a little tack real quick. Okay. Um, on these tabs, I mean, you can really spend some time and get them really, really perfect. I'm gonna just try to eyeball it a little bit and kinda get it about where I want it. Let's tack, I tack each end like this. Okay. And this machine is pretty, feels pretty hot. Now on these little one tens, you gotta be careful if you crank them up too much. Like I said, you'll, you'll blow breakers with them. So they don't take, they won't take a lot. All right. We got a tack right there. And you can already see that it's kind of, you know, it leaves a lot of, a lot of, a lot of, it looks kind of dusty like baby powder or something in there. You know what I mean? But that's just part of the flux burning in there. So anyway, let's run a, let's run a little bead in there. And then when we're done, Maybe we'll make a couple of passes. We'll make another tab and then we'll switch it over to some hard wire, okay? Okay, real quick before I get started on this, typically anything with slag you drag, okay? So look, going back to this, the old school stick welding, with slag, you stick it in and you drag it this way, okay? You don't push it like this, you, you pull it because that slag will come off and get on top. It's all part of the process of the welding that slag will come out and you can see it boil around on top of it. It's all part of the process, okay? Um, with the MIG welding, it's usually the same way. I, I can go, I go either way. I push, pull, but typically you pull. Pulling it will be a better weld. Um, it depends on the situation you're in and where you're at and if you can get to that. I mean, not everything's a perfect environment all the time, but with these welding tabs at your home, in your shop, I recommend you pulling it okay don't push it all right because it'll look a lot better so let's just see if we can if we can get this thing to weld okay so what we have here is the flux core weld right here um it looks dirty it um it looks sloppy um that's just kind of how them welds come out i don't care how good you weld it's still gonna throw slag around and it smokes a lot, okay? All that flux is burning and that's what all this white stuff is right here. You can see this coming off right here, okay? Um, and you know, the, the little dingleberries that are on there will actually clean off a little bit, you know what I mean? You might have to get in there and really get a good wire brush on them, but I'm just gonna take a wire brush and go down through the middle of this so you guys can actually see the weld that is under the flux. Um, I mean, don't underestimate flux core welding. It is very hot and it penetrates very well. It's a, actually a very good weld. Make sure if you're using a wire wheel, make sure you have some safety glasses on and everybody around you, because these things come out and they're like a freaking dart right into your eye, okay? So. All right, so that's kind of the uh, flux core weld. I mean, it's, it's not bad. I mean, I'm sure if I sat here and ran a few more passes, I could get a little bit better at it, but that's basically it. It's a good penetrated weld. You can see the line under here, this heat line right here. You can see where it's actually penetrated down into this plate. So that's telling me that this weld is plenty hot. There's not a there's not a ton of undercut in there where it's gonna break off. It's a pretty decent little weld right there, okay? So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna switch on this same plate. We're gonna turn this machine over to um, 
hardwire. I'm gonna show you how to do that. There is a process that we gotta go through to do it, but I'm gonna do it so you guys can see what your 110 welder will do if you wanna run the flux or if you wanna run shielded gas, okay? So let's get started. Okay, so let me get into this really quick on um, flux core and hardwire and what you need to do to make it happen, okay? Um, now, the first thing that you wanna do is unplug your machine. Reason why, you're gonna reach in here, you're gonna change your wire, and you're gonna reverse the polarity on this machine. Now, whenever you're welding with flux core, you gotta remember that your positive, basically everybody thinks this is a, your positive lead. Well, right now, this positive lead is running negative, okay? This is your negative piece, and then your ground becomes your positive. When you reverse the polarity with hard wire, it switches it, okay? This becomes back the ground, and this becomes your hot side, okay? So the polarity basically, like when you switch it over to hard wire and you start welding, your ground works as a magnet to the hard wire that comes out of this machine. So when you weld, it actually just, it penetrates, it pulls it in. If you've ever welded it with the, re, with the polarity the wrong way, it just looks really crusty and dry and hard and the weld kind of sits up on top of the, the material and it doesn't impregnate itself into the material. So you wanna make sure that your polarity is set right and it works the same way with flux core when you have the polarity wrong. The weld looks really, it just, it's a terrible looking weld. It doesn't penetrate. And um, so you gotta make sure that your polarity is set right whenever you weld with flux core. And when you're doing flux core, you wanna make sure that your positive side is your ground. And this ground is your positive, basically. It's kind of confusing. There's diagrams out there where you guys can really get on there and look at it. And in this video, if we can, we'll put one in there so you guys can actually see what it looks like, um, what, what the polarity does and how it works. Um, it's, it's a long, it's kind of a long process. Right now, I'm just gonna give you the basics on it. But what we need to do first, unplug the machine when you get started, okay? Um, now on this machine, you can see inside of here, you got your, you've got your leads right here, okay? All right. This one right here, the red one, we need to switch up here to the top and we need to reverse the two, okay? Um, I have this machine usually always set up for flux cord. So when I do that, this is how I always run this machine, okay? So we wanna get in here. Okay, so I wanted to grab this ratchet so it bites it a little bit harder. Okay, I'm gonna reach in here. It's pretty simple to do this. It's not real hard. Some of them make them um, make this an easy process. This is really not that big of a deal to get in here and just switch it out really quick. Okay, now you wanna just switch these wires over. Basically, with hard wire, your black wire goes back to negative, okay? Because what you're doing is you're using your ground basically as a ground again. All right, we got the polarity swapped around. Let me tighten this up really quick. Okay, now, all right, so once we get that in there, you've, you've got the polarity where you want it you have to take this roll of wire out, okay? And usually what I do is, I not, and I don't have it, let me grab my pliers, hold on. Okay, so what we're gonna do when we go to change this out is got a set of your Welper pliers here. This is your, um, your tension on your, basically on your wire. And I'm gonna show you the difference between the drive rollers on hard wire and on flux core, okay? So we wanna open this up and what I always kind of do is I just back off a little bit of wire in here. And you gotta be careful because especially with flux core, what happens is usually there's a little, little hole right here. And what you wanna do, be careful because this stuff, when you change this wire out, this wire is so like springy and hard, it will, it'll pop off and you'll have a mess. It just it goes everywhere. There's a little hole usually right here where you can kind of go through and tie it so it doesn't go anywhere. And you take this off. 
this should just come right out, okay? But you wanna make sure, because what happens is, these things will spring, and it'll just be wire everywhere, and you waste all your wire. So make sure that you kind of tie that up, you know what I mean, when you pull it out. Now, what you have here inside of this machine is um, your drive motor here. And this right here um, is your drive roller wheel right here. And if you can see, I don't know if you can see in here. I don't, can you look in here? All right, inside of here, what you have is you have your drive roller motor and your roller right here, okay? This one here, if you look right down in here really close, you can see that this one's got like little cogs in it where it actually bites into that wire and it pushes it through the liner. Now the hard wire, they're smooth. See, this is a smooth one for hard wire. This one here is set up for flux core. Um, so typically you would have to change your drive roller to the hard wire one. I'm not gonna do that because I'm gonna, when I get done with this video, I'm gonna put this right back to flux core. Right now I'm just gonna run it because I'm just gonna run a little bit of wire through it and show you guys it'll weld. Now, on, also when you guys are doing this and you put it in, you can see that I don't have a lot of tension on this. The problem, especially with flux core, when you guys get your welder and you wanna set it up, don't crank on that thing so hard because there's a couple of things. One, it kind of roll, it wears out your motor. And number two, what happens is if it's so tight, it pinches your wire. And you got to remember this flux core wire right here, it's hollow in the middle. It has flux in it. So what you do is you crush it. And then when you crush it, what it does is when it comes out of your tip, it's going like this. So if you guys ever see that on your wire when you're welding and it's going like this while you're, it's coming out of your tip, it's probably because you got this so tight that it's crushing your wire. And then what it does is it just, it comes out in a mess, okay? Or if you run it out and you can see where the bite marks from the cogs are on it, it's probably too tight. If it's not smooth like this, then you probably got it too tight. So just remember that if you can't get the wire out of the end of your liner, your gun, it's probably not that. It's probably because your liner is so beat up and dirty and bent and it's got a bend in it and it won't push it through. So what you do is you tighten this all the way down to shove it through there. But then when it comes out, the wire is so stressed out from being pinched that it just goes like this and it's a terrible looking mess and it makes your weld look like crap. So remember that this tensioner right here, it doesn't need a lot of tension on it. Um, you want to tighten it down and I'll show you, and I think I showed you in the Welder 101 video, how to know and set up the tension on that. And I can show you on the hard wire here in just a minute. But for right now, I'm going to get this switched out really quick so we can get onto the welding. Um, okay, so we'll open this up. Um, the welpers, you're going to have to, you're going to have to drag some wire out of this thing. So here's your flux core wire out. And um, <clears throat> I always kind of wind it back up because this stuff's such a mess. You trip over it in the shop and it turns into something. So anyway, put that there. All right, so we're gonna go to the hard wire side now. We've got our polarity switched over. Here's a roll of wire that I was probably using um, on some other project a while ago. Now, when I feed it in, as you can see this thing right here, you want the wire to go like this. You know what I mean? You don't want to put your wire in and it tries to go like that. You know what I mean? So that'd be like, if I tried to run it in here from the top and down and in, this cable would bend like this and it, it would probably work, but it's so much stress on everything. So the best way to do it when you put it in is put it in like this so your wire flows right into the machine. And it's a lot easier on your drive roller motor and everything else, okay? Put that in there. This is your tensioner. So if your wire's really loose, you can, you can tighten this up and it kind of snugs everything up. I like to run mine loose because like I said, I don't want to put a lot of tension um, pressure on the drive motor because they, they will wear around if you put too much pressure on them. Okay, so let's see if we can get this out of here. And this wheel, this wheel actually for this machine is probably too big. Usually they send you a little tiny roll for these. So bear with me here a minute, cause this is really kind of a, a tight one. 
Let me see my glasses so I can see what the hell's going on. So anyway, you want to get it right in this, this cable. This is called your liner. All right, and you'll see it start to come through right here to your drive roller wheel. See it coming in there, okay? And then you want to make sure that you can get it lined up going into your other one like that. See that? Okay, once you're in there, close this back down, close that, okay? Now you've got tension on everything. You know what I mean? We might have to put a little tension on this thing. Basically inside of this machine, you have a jog right here. And this jog allows you to run the wire through the gun at a high rate of speed without holding the trigger and without wasting your gas, okay? So this is a good option to have. As you can see, it's going through right here. And any second, it'll come out the end right here. It just makes it a lot quicker. There you go. You can see it come out. All right, guys, so look, I'm gonna just show you guys how to get the tension on your wire once you get in here. You wanna put your tip back in. Make sure you have the same tip, the 035 tip or whatever you want. Put it in there. Make sure you run your nozzle because now we're running shielded gas over the wire, okay? And then you're set up like a regular machine. Okay, and then the tension right here on your drive roller. Right now, there's not much tension on it at all. Um, so when you hold this down, it probably like, say 10 or 15 degrees, maybe even 20. You pull the trigger, your wire, wire's not coming out. It will barely, because you don't have any tension. So you start cranking this down a little bit. And as you tighten it down like this, you want to get a little tension on here. And as it starts to bite, See that? See how it's coiling? Now what this machine wants to do is because there's no ground to it, it thinks that it's basically in a jog. Um, it, it goes into jog where it goes from it and then it really goes fast, okay? But this is kind of what you want to have. Like if you're going to test your wire coming out of your gun, that's about the tension you want it to roll out, okay? You want it to just kind of roll it. Okay, that's when you know you got enough tension on it. So I'm good right there. I could probably even back it off. I just wanted to put a little bit more on it so you guys can see it really coil out of there. But if you have a machine and, you know, with the right drive roller in it, I don't have it in this machine, but you want to make sure that if you're going to run a lot of hard wire in this thing, you run the right drive roller in it. Okay, we've got our polarity switched. Um, we've got our wire switched out. Now what we need to do is we need to apply gas to the machine. Um, I've just got this other machine over here that I'm going to run it off a bottle that I have over here, which is a, a 7525 um, gas mix um, argon CO2. Okay, I run argon CO2 because it is a it's just cleaner. Okay, you can run straight CO2 if you want. But the argon in it actually makes the weld look nice and clean and it looks good. Um, there's probably a science to it that I don't even know, but it, uh, it looks a lot better when you run the argon with it. All right, so now we've got everything switched out. We've got some gas on, we wanna turn our gauge on. Okay, so on the gauges, and I think we've gone over this on my welding course, but this is basically your gas tank gauge telling you what you got left in here which, you know, I'm getting to where I'm gonna need some pretty soon. Um, right now, the, the pressure that I have, you can run as much as you really want, but I, I wanna run it, I like to run mine in the shop anywhere from 25 to 30. You don't need a lot, okay? This atmosphere in here, we don't have a lot of wind, we don't have, unless you're, now, if it's summertime and you're in your shop, you got fans blowing, you got swamp coolers going, you might wanna increase your your gas flow, but here right now, it's winter time here in Las Vegas, and there is just not much uh, breeze in here. It's a real steel in here, so you don't need to waste a lot of your your gas, you know. And if you have to fill that big bottle up, it gets expensive, okay. And that's one thing about flux core that's nice. You don't have to buy a bottle of gas, okay. Um, it's just a lot cheaper to run, but 
with that trade out, the trade out is your welds not as nice. And I don't even know, I'm, I don't even know how, I don't even know where this machine's set up for hardwire. We're gonna go ahead and make a pass with it and just see what happens. We'll dial the machine in so it actually welds good. I have never welded hardwire out of this 110 machine ever yet. So today's the first day. We're gonna give it a shot. We're gonna use this other side of this right here and see what we get. Um, according to this machine right here, once you go to gas, you've got no gas, which is meaning your flux, um, or you got gas. Okay, they have a little chart here, um, eighth inch, three sixteenths. I'm gonna go off the three sixteenth side because we're welding a, a T-joint together here. You got two different metals here that are eighth inch. I wanna really put some heat in there and really get a good, some good penetration, okay? I like my weld to go into it. Sometimes you can fine tune them and put a little bit more than what the chart asked, um, you know, depending on what it is, okay? Okay, now, also, with this right here, we're not gonna drag, we're gonna push, okay? MIG welding is, you can do either one. Really, you could push, you could pull, I don't care. But pushing it, me, it looks a lot better. You can control your pedal really good. It looks good, I like it, I like to push it. Um, anyway, we're gonna run it in here, see what happens. I'm gonna make one pass, and then we're gonna show you the difference between what the flux core looks like and the, uh, the shielded gas wire, okay? I'm kind of out of position here because I've got, I'm gonna tack this real quick because I've got a camera right here that's picking up my weld so you guys can see what I'm doing. T typically, you wanna get in position, you wanna get comfortable, you wanna have your workpiece right here where you can get down in there and really go. But like on this one right here, I'm gonna do it this way just because I want the cameras to be able to get it. So it's a little out of position for me, but we're gonna roll with it anyway, okay? So let's see what we get here. All right, it's not bad. I mean, I think with a little bit of adjustment, I uh, <laughs> I stepped on this Sharpie and I slipped when right in the middle of my weld. So it kind of gave me a little <laughs> kick in the butt right there. I can see it. But anyway, um, you know, this can really be worked on. I could tell that my voltage was getting kind of weak down here at the end. Um, but, you know, you can improve your weld. This is I mean, not really that great of a looking weld. I could do something I'm sure a lot better than that. But you can obviously see, you know, the difference between a flux core weld and a hardwire weld. And the hardwire is just so much more wider. Um, it's easier to, to work with, it's cleaner. You know, I didn't have to go through and clean this all off. So let's, uh, let's put that one aside. Let's. Let's mess with this machine a couple more times. I want to see if we can just get a good weld out of it. That was the first pass um, with the settings. And I felt like I was running out of some voltage there. And a lot of times, like I said, with these 110s, what happens is when you have a long extension cord, which I'm, I'm hooked to two other lights it's going through a cord that's probably 100 feet, 50 feet long. So it's really hard to pull that voltage, okay? If I was to hook it up to a, a directly into the wall, it would probably weld a little bit better. So I'm gonna move this thing a little bit different this time. And I, always, I like to tack it, it kind of holds it for me, okay? Let's run another one. There we go, things are, things are starting to get a lot better. 
Um, you know, there that's not a bad little weld. Moving along, trying to really like roll with it. Now, I'm gonna quickly weld the next one because I wanna show you what the weld looks like with heat in it. Now, what we do is we've, we've got heat in this. We've got heat in this metal right now. Now we're gonna see the difference in the penetration. It ought to flow in there really good. Same thing, same setup. I'm gonna do it while we got heat in it and see what happens. Now, you can kind of see on this one, if I can get it real close here. Okay, so this was our first pass right here. And you can see how it kind of has a little crown on the top right here. Okay, that's a typical everyday weld, nice. But with this 110 welder, it had, once I welded that, we went right into this one, right? And you can see this doesn't have much crown in it. You can see my, my beads, my little, my little uh, puddles right here, my little dimes, I should say. I'm moving faster, you know why? Because it's going in, it's, it, it wants it, it's absorbing it because there's so much heat in the material, it wants it. And if you wait around too long, you start getting undercut. So you wanna kind of roll with it, you wanna go with it, you can feel it, you know what I mean? It's flowing into it and you can space it off really nice, okay? Um, and kind of get a more of a, you can get, this is a probably a better penetrated weld than this one over here because it went into it, because it had heat in it. So. Keep that in mind, you guys, like if you have a 110 welder, um, you know, think about your voltage. Um, you don't have a ton of voltage like a 220. And you can see right here, the difference was between preheating your metal and just running it just cold. Um, literally, I've, I've taken a torch, and I don't know if you guys have ever done this before, but this table right here has water in it believe it or not, it has moisture in the table. If I was to take a torch and heat it up, you could actually see the heat push the moisture out of it, okay? Um, Preheating is pretty important on a lot of different applications on what you're welding. Um, you know, typically, you don't need to worry about it on a lot of different things. If you're welding, you know, you know, wrought iron fences or you're putting the four link in your car, it's not like you gotta go in there and preheat everything and make it work. If you got a 110 welder and you're trying to weld a four link in your car, you better preheat it, period. Don't even take a chance. Don't try to weld a 3 16 plate against a piece of 120 wall round tube with a 110 welder. Don't do it. Either preheat the hell out of it and run some good wire in it or go get a 220 machine, okay? Um, but this is one way to get around it. If you only have a 110 in your garage, you can use this thing for almost anything. Just remember, if you're welding anything over eighth inch, preheat it. Okay, it will, it will weld eighth inch cold, but once you preheat it and you put some heat in it, man, it goes right in it. So I hope you guys understand what I'm doing. I hope you love this little video. Uh, make sure that you guys, if you're interested in welding, go to my Welder 101 course, check it out. There's so many hours of information that I've put on that video for you guys to get started. Once you get started, I wanna bring you right here at Welder Up. We're gonna sit on this same table. I wanna get people in here and I wanna teach them how to weld. I wanna teach these kids and whoever wants to do it, women. I got, I got women that wanna come do this course, older guys that wanna come do this course, just to get in here, get their hands dirty and have fun with this. So look, make sure you guys subscribe, like our channel, and I will see you on the next one.